there are certain ways that we can combine our investing in our business, in real estate, whatever it might be, with tax strategies that can dramatically decrease the taxes that we pay. Every year I work with hundreds of business owners and something that I notice almost every time is that there are a handful of tax strategies that pretty much everybody misses, especially in the first few years of business ownership. Today we're gonna to talk about what those strategies are and a little bit of how to implement them. Now I'm not a CPA and so you're gonna to wanna to run these strategies through your tax professional. What are these tax strategies that almost everybody misses? Well, they're not that complicated and they're fairly common. And so sometimes you may have already heard about these tax strategies, but you need a little help getting them implemented. One of the first ones that I see being missed or underutilized is entity selection. So there are a handful of different entities out there that you can choose to use in your business and that will affect dramatically how you're taxed. So real quick, kind of the most common tax entity structuring that we see is one, a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC, or a sole proprietorship. And they're all gonna be taxed a little bit different and they're gonna have different repercussions for how your business is taxed, how much money you get to pay yourself, and the potential risk for an audit down the road, which of course we wanna avoid. Nine times out of 10, from my perspective, most business owners are typically going to select an S Corp for tax classification and for how they're gonna be taxed within their business. An S Corp is really just an S election meaning you're probably still an, an LLC by entity, but you're being taxed as an S Corp. And the reason that that makes such a big difference is it enables you, the business owner, to pay less in payroll taxes, also known as FICA, also known as self-employment taxes, right? A lot of these are kind of synonymous. Basically what we're working with is your payroll taxes, which are going to be social security and Medicare taxes. If you're a W-2 employee, you're paying half of those payroll taxes. You're paying half of the Social Security and half of the Medicare, and your employer is paying the other half. But when you become self-employed or you have your own business, suddenly you're the employee and the employer, which means you're paying both of those, which ends up being about 15% plus a little bit more in taxes. And so by switching to an S-Corp, you're able to get away from some of those payroll taxes. Now you're still gonna be taxed at your federal and state levels if that's applicable, but some of these payroll taxes we're able to avoid. So it's a big conversation and one that you need to have with your CPA, but right off the bat, you're probably thinking to yourself, I would love to pay less in taxes and I'd love to pay less in payroll taxes. And so the way you do it is one, you start with your business, you elect an S Corp, and then what you can do is you can differentiate between your payroll, your salary, and your distributions, right? Because you're a business owner, you may have a few employees, some of that money that you're getting from your business may not be directly related to the activities that you perform in your business. And that's why we see these distributions or these owner dividends, these owner draws, whatever you wanna call them, those are taxed differently if you're an S-Corp. And so you have your salary portion, that's taxed at your federal, state, payroll, Medicare taxes, right? All of those things. And then you've got your distributions, your dividends, your draws. Those are gonna be taxed at federal and state rates, but not your payroll taxes. You need to make sure you do this correctly, right? Because the last thing we wanna do is get in trouble with the IRS or lose any sleep at night that takes you away from focusing on your business or your family. So we wanna make sure we do this correct, but we also wanna make sure we're saving as much money as possible, which is why this is a very unique situation to everybody. Because what you have to do is you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. So what does that mean? What is a reasonable salary? A reasonable salary is what you could hire someone else to do if you needed someone else to do the work that you're doing in the business. So it's relatively simple um, to come up with that, what that reasonable salary might be. And usually what we find is a reasonable salary for most business owners we work with is lower than what they're paying themselves, which means they're overpaying in payroll taxes, especially with the way that payroll taxes are going, right? A big portion of those payroll taxes, about 15 and some change percent, is Social Security. And that Social Security phases out at a certain point depending on the year because it tends to go up each year. But we wanna be able to, if possible, get our reasonable salary below that point so we're saving as much in Social Security and Medicare taxes as possible. To sum it up, just briefly, by switching to an S-Corp, 
you're able to decrease your payroll taxes if you're able to justify paying yourself a lower reasonable salary. To do that, you need to have the right CPA that understands these rules and isn't going to have you overpay in the name of being overly conservative and overly scared of the IRS and, and not following the rules, right? So having a tax strategist in place to make sure you're doing this right is extremely important. The next subject is going to be paying your kids through the business. That's a tax strategy. You can pay your kids through your business, typically up to twelve to $13,000, the way the tax law currently stands, completely tax-free. But once again, there's some nuance, right? As with any tax strategy, and you wanna make sure you do it right, you wanna make sure you do it legitimately, and you wanna make sure you're getting as much advantageous tax strategy out of it as possible so that you can take that money, put it into your lifestyle or your business, and accelerate towards economic independence. So let's talk about how we do this. First of all, your kids have to be old enough and able to earn money through your business. A lot of times when people have infants or toddlers, it can be kind of difficult. And so a lot of times we're seeing business owners doing marketing or advertising fees if they're able to use pictures or videos of their family in their business. So that's typically the go-to strategy for young children. But as your children start to get older, you may be able to find that they're actually able to contribute and help in the business in multiple ways. And we've got some resources to help you figure out what those ways might be. But that's the first thing. Make sure that your children can earn money through the business. Second, once again, entity selection. So it gets a little bit complicated here, but in general, if you pay your kids through an S Corp versus an LLC or a sole proprietorship with different forms of ownership, you can end up paying zero taxes and you can end up paying a little bit of taxes, right? And obviously if zero taxes is an option, we're probably going to take that. So I won't get into all the details today, but if you reach out to us and get in touch with the CPAs that we work with that perform those three-year tax reviews for our members, then we'll get into those details, of course. But just know that there are certain strategies that you can do to really reduce that taxable amount that you're paying your kids. The third is going to be what we call the Augusta Rule. Now, the reason it's called the Augusta Rule is because it kind of came from the Masters Tournament for you golf fans out there, which takes place in Augusta, Georgia every year. But basically what it says is you can rent out your own home up to 14 days a year, income tax-free. And so what that means for business owners is a lot of times they will rent out their own home to their business for events and meetings that they have at their house in lieu of renting out another house or an event venue that would cost them money you know, that they're paying a third party. So instead of paying somebody else, you're able to utilize your home as the event venue for your business events and meetings. I think of it as a win-win, right? You're able to not only get a tax strategy out of having people over to your house, but if you have employees, contractors, business partners, investment partners, right? You guys should be able to get together and work on these things, build employee and, and company morale at your home. And so it's a win-win for the business and for your tax strategies. Now, those are the three big ones, entity structuring, paying kids, and the Augusta rule. Now, there's plenty of other things out there, and that's why we do the three-year tax review, but I see these three as being three major items that people miss. The fourth really big item that people miss is going to be what we call phantom or non-cash expenses. A lot of people that we work with either invest in real estate already or would like to invest in real estate, or perhaps they're purchasing or financing a lot of equipment for their business. You know, we work with a lot of chiropractors and dentists and people in the healthcare industry, and they have to purchase a lot of equipment. Well, what that means is there's potentially a lot of depreciation that you can get off of those assets that are creating cash flow for you that may be underutilized from a tax perspective. We have straight line depreciation and then we have accelerated depreciation. So what I'm saying is there are certain ways that we can combine our investing in our business, in real estate, whatever it might be, with tax strategies that can dramatically decrease the taxes that we pay. Now, one thing I wanna note here is that there's a difference between a zero cost tax strategy and an efficient tax strategy. A lot of people think that the best tax strategy is a tax strategy that makes you pay as little as possible in taxes. I personally feel like what we're going for is an efficient tax strategy, right? Depending on what your personal situation is and your personal goals, it may be that the best tax strategy, the most efficient tax strategy, is just paying the appropriate amount. The appropriate amount that keeps you safe from an audit, keeps you doing legitimate tax strategies, 
and enables you to do the things in your life that you want to do, right? For example, if your goal is to purchase a house next month, your dream home with your family, well, it might make sense to actually pay some taxes so that you can qualify for a really low interest rate loan, you know? And so that's just one example among many of where an efficient tax strategy isn't the same as a zero dollar tax strategy. And so just something to keep in mind that everybody's tax strategy is unique and personal to them, which is of course why we encourage everybody to fill out the Wealth Architecture Questionnaire, see if it makes sense to work with the financial architect and start with this three year tax review process to see if there is opportunities within your business and personal finance situation to open up additional cash flow through tax strategy. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Don't miss out on a single Wealth Factory tip like this next one with proven ways to build your wealth.